For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. The Minnesota New American Integration Package was unveiled by Representative Carlos Mariani, Senator Patricia torres Ray, and supporters at a recent press conference. The package of seven bills with more to come seeks to eliminate economic disparities and other unique challenges faced by new immigrants in Minnesota. Specific measures would encourage citizenship, expand educational opportunities, stabilize communities, and create economic opportunities for new businesses. Here's that press conference. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlos Mariani Rosa, state representative from uh, St. Paul. And I'm joined here with my good friend and colleague uh, and awesome collaborator, Senator Patricia torres Ray. And we're here uh, this morning to enroll the Minnesota New American Integration Act. Uh, currently, um, that <coughs> act, bless you, currently that act involves uh, seven uh, bills. But there's more to come. Um, there's more to come because this really is a long-term uh, effort. It's one that's going to transcend uh, beyond this legislative session. And our attempt uh, with these bills and working with uh, various communities, and it's important to emphasize that we're talking about uh, different communities here, uh, our Southeast Asian and Asian communities, our East African and African uh, communities, uh, Latin American uh, communities in particular. Um, that all have very particular, unique challenges and opportunities, and so many of them have stepped forward. This legislative session proposed a number of things, uh, but they've also said, you know, let's also work together uh, in terms of proposing, uh, making proposals that have common uh, mutual uh, impact and effect. So our attempt, the Senator and my attempt, is to align Minnesota laws with those wonderful opportunities and with the realities of, quite frankly, the state's fastest growing uh, community. Um, Minnesota's uh, immigrant community uh, is percentage-wise not as big percentage-wise as the nation, but it grows way faster uh, than the nation. The last decade it's tripled, while immig immigrants to the United States and the rest of the country um, has doubled. And we're one of the most diverse in, in, that, uh, in that growth. Uh, these, as I said, they cross many racial and cultural uh, origins. And we believe that they make our state a much more uh, diverse place. So what we want to do is uh, really, as state legislators, to connect Minnesota to the incredible opportunities that exist by virtue uh, of the blessing of these uh, uh, diverse communities, the benefits that exist of connecting to the global economy, the global civic uh, uh, infrastructure, the global knowledge, the global uh, culture and arts, everything that makes our life rich. Um, you know, Torres, uh, Senator Torres Ray, we began the presidential campaign this year, as you all know, with some really fierce and, quite frankly, ugly, toxic rhetoric um, that was uh, very clearly targeted, uh, unmistakably, uh, at immigrants um, um, of, all, uh, of all persuasions and, and all uh, communities. We obviously think that's a wrong thing to do. Um, what we need to do, our job as legislators, is to build community. And uh, um, speaking about immigrants um, is about speaking about uh, uh, a group, a large group of people who want nothing more than to build community and build prosperity. And so we really want to command the narrative in our state about the reality of immigrants and not about the falseness and the, the fear that's uh, being pandered out there for political uh, advantage. So uh, we have seven bills, as I mentioned, uh, that are going to touch on key areas. I'll go very quickly through them, and then I'll ask uh, the Senator to say a few words. Uh, we have uh, a bill. One of our bills, and so some of our themes here, I'll give you the themes. You know, one of the themes is about eliminating barriers and lifting up opportunities. So we have an immigrant integration bill that will create a task force to look into how state law negatively affects uh, immigrants. Um, as we did our own research, we, we found many uh, rules and uh, administrative rules um, in state law that uh, really um, uh, discriminates uh, and creates barriers for, for immigrant communities. We need a, an entity, a, a, a something, a somebody, to be able to focus in on that so that we can work to eliminate those. Um, we want to encourage citizenship. Uh, there are incredible benefits to citizenship. Um, so we're creating a naturalization tax credit uh, to be able to provide a little bit of an economic boost and, and help uh, for the citizenship fees uh, that come with naturalization. 
Uh, we want to expand educational opportunity. Um, so we've got a bill that will expand on our common uh, work over the last couple of years to uh, open up a higher ed uh, to undocumented um, uh, immigrants and to other immigrants. Um, also an educational opportunity, um, we want to uh, create uh, new resources for a particular type of immigrant student. Uh, they're called uh, SLIFE students, and I can say more in our question and answer uh, about that. Um, we want to stabilize communities by providing uh, homeowner uh, tax uh, credit uh, uh, through the Homestead uh, tax credit system. We want to work on safety. Uh, there are safety issues. Many of the communities are quite vulnerable by virtue of being immigrants and being new to our society, particularly those who could be exploited um, uh, and abused sexually. Um, and then finally, we want to uh, work on economic opportunity by creating uh, a, within the existing framework that we already have in state statute, a new American Business Technical Assistance Fund. So um, I look forward to the questions. I look forward to hearing from some of the advocates and Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Mariani. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Patricia Torres Ray, and I represent District 63 in the Minnesota Senate. I am delighted to be here, and I thank you, Representative Mariani, for leading this effort on behalf of our communities and for the community advocates and uh, the supporters who are here today. I am um, very pleased with um, this opportunity that we are engaging in. I think that the invitation that was made by the governor to address disparities really opened an important conversation in the Minnesota Senate. We form a committee that is looking into the different proposals that are moving <coughs> forward. What we realize in these conversations is that when we talk about new immigrants, we really need to cover a lot of aspects in which uh, immigrants are working hard to build this state. So we have uh, the construction industry, we have uh, agriculture, we have uh, hospitality industry. So when we talk about transportation, when we talk about services, when we talk about education, the health industry, uh, we are having a discussion about the impact that new immigrants have in, the, in these industries. What we understand uh, through that analysis too is that we have very few programs in place to support the training of new immigrants who really desire to work. We have little funding available for uh, technical training as, as well as language uh, acquisition. We have many people who have come to this country as professionals, but they find themselves uh, you know, starting their careers all over again as they come to this new country. We feel that we have tremendous opportunities to engage with these new immigrants to offer those opportunities for them to participate in the labor force and to contribute to uh, develop a better economy for our state. Uh, we also have had multiple conversations about the impact of young people who are children of new immigrants in this country. Many of these children uh, were born in this country, but their parents are new immigrants to our, our country and our state. Uh, many of them find themselves in communities, in families, where they have parents uh, that do not speak the language but they are, uh, have a great desire to have the children succeed in the schools and uh, uh, obtain uh, higher education diplomas, go to school, and that particular uh, uh, goal and dream that has been really the opportunity that has been given to many immigrants in this state is no longer um, something that uh, we feel we can reach, uh, that new immigrants are able to, to, to really um, accomplish uh, due to the jobs that they hold today. They um, are not making, they don't have incomes that allow them to send their kids to college and they so desire to do that. So we want to engage in a conversation about 